We're here in Harmon, and you are there on TV and all over the world via the magic of the internet. Thank you so much for watching. This is KBM News Extra. I'm Jason Salas, and we are talking with Cam and Frank, and we are talking about the Special Olympics swimming event. Gentlemen, I can't believe it's been already a year that you guys put on this wonderful event, and as I understand, Frank, it's getting bigger and better. Getting bigger and better. And, That's and, a good problem uh, to have. Oh, yeah, it is, uh, and costly. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> but, you know... Uh, that's, that's why we're here. We want the program to grow, and we want everyone with an intellectual disability uh, as well as some physical disabilities to come out mm -hmm. and uh, get the exercise they need and compete. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's our purpose for being here. So for people, Cam, that may not be familiar with you know, the, the mechanics of, of the events, uh, what types of swimming events are there? Well, there's um, development, developmental stages. We have p individuals who have less capacity and more capacity to compete. So sure. we have floating devices or jog walk events. And then we have the, feet, the competitive 15 meter breaststroke freestyle. So there's a variety of events or races that happen out during the day just based on the individual's capacity. Mm -hmm. And of course, Frank, as you were saying, you know, the community's help is always, it's always solicited, but it's not like you even need to. People hear the words like Special Olympics and they're like, I'm there. I, I want to help. Oh, I want to do everything I can. So, so what, what can we, the community, do to, to volunteer? Well, you know, that day of the event. Because uh, everybody thinks of the track and field event. Right. Yeah. And, and that day of the event, the biggest thing you can do is actually come out and support the athletes. Simple uh, as that. As simple as that. Just come out and uh, cheer. Just come out, cheer. Um, you know, and, and uh, like every Special Olympics uh, Guam event, uh, you don't need to worry about bringing out water to hydrate because we'll have all of that. Mm -hmm. And we always plan to have more numbers than actually show up. And we'll also have food. Mm -hmm. And uh, so come out and, and cheer the athletes on. Uh, that means the world to them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's their day. Absolutely. Now, I'm curious because... Um, of course, we're coming up on the end for some schools. They're, are, they're already in their summer break, but uh, it's the end of the school year for a lot of Guam schools. Um, are you having some athletes come out and represent their school, or can they just come out like on, on behalf of themselves or their families or their organizations? In this event, uh, there are student athletes, but they're not representing their school. They're mm -hmm. representing themselves, and I believe there's about 24 of them um, in this event. And there's a total of 71 athletes participating or competing in this event. That's big. Yeah, it's That's pretty a lot big. Of um, I think the oldest is 64 and the youngest is 8. You have to be 8 years old or older to participate or compete in these events. And yeah, I mean, this, this, the students will represent themselves in this mm -hmm. event. Now, I'm curious now because you said the oldest person being 64. Is that the same a gentleman, I believe, right, that competed in the track event? Or is it a female? I, I believe it's a female. It, it is a female. Yeah. Okay, yeah. because I believe at, at the track event there was a... There was an older gentleman, gentleman in, yes. his, in his 60s. In his yes, that's can, correct. Can you actually compete as a Special Olympian? Can you compete in the track and field event and the swimming event? You can. Okay. And, and we encourage all our athletes to try to compete in all the events. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, become uh, multi-athletes, if Most you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it, uh, it, it brings them out. It keeps them away from the couches. <laughs> and, and they get out and they exercise. The nice thing is that they exercise... Uh, uh, and, and they actually practice nine weeks before the event. Mm -hmm. So they're kept busy, yeah. and they're doing something physically, and that's, that's the whole idea, you know, improving their lives uh, health-wise. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the event itself, it's, it's a one-day event. It's a wonderful community uh, celebration of the true, you know, the Olympic spirit, which means, you know, like good sportsmanship, yeah. you know, striving to do your best, you know, cheering on your fellow athletes. You know, it, it's not so much about the competition. I mean, everybody's trying to do their best, but, you know, it's – help each other, you know, celebrate each other. But, um, of course, it, like you said, a lot of that goes into it. There's training, there's preparation, there's um, perhaps changing your diet and everything like that. Um, what do Special Olympians go through when they, when they go through that regimen of training? Um, well, you know, the, uh, they go through a nine-week training program, and usually when you're swimming, you don't really want to have a full stomach, especially with the athletes we have. We don't mm -hmm. want them throwing up in the water. So... Mm -hmm. I think timing of when they eat and when they practice is kind of uh, co coincide with the event that's going to happen this weekend during the morning. So their diet is probably uh, based on when they're feeding and when they're eating. Okay. That's, that's really it. Um, I don't know much of the athletes who really take on a true um, dietitian diet for 
uh, an event. I know they train really hard um, mm -hmm. for their own heats. Um, each athlete will participate in two different types of events. You might actually wind up eating more because you're burning so many calories. Exactly, but hydration is more important. Yeah. And um, and that's one thing that we provide in every uh, practice. We make sure they're hydrated. Ironically, because you're in the water. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think, I think the biggest thing that the athletes go through during the nine weeks of training is learning how to work with each other, mm -hmm. learning how to work with new faces, new coaches, uh, and, and uh, learning to become part of our community. So uh, I, I've been to a couple of practices, and uh, practices generally run about two hours for each age group. I think the first hour is uh, developing their, their swimming skills, their techniques, and, and then the rest is, well, swimming, but also having a good time in the water. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what's important. Oh, very cool. We, we want them to always want to come back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on Saturday, uh, just to let you know, every person that competes will walk away with a medal. So they're, they're winners regardless. That is wonderful. And f whether they're first, second, or third place, uh, they're going to walk away with something. And, and these medals are so important to them. I mean, you've seen it. Yeah, so there's that, there's that true sense of achievement. Absolutely. I set my mind to do something, I put in the work, and I was rewarded for it. Absolutely. A life I, skill. Basically. Exactly. A life skill, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can do anything as long as I yeah. put my yes. mind to it. Okay, so now let's talk about venue, because mercifully and thankfully and fortunately, <laughs> we are now having this wonderful event at a somewhat familiar venue, right? Right, which is, which is the Agania Pool. Uh, there it's open a, again. Right, absolutely. Thank you, DPR. And yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, Richard Banez, you're the Richard, man. Richard uh, Banez and his Kramer. crew and, and John Kramer. I mean, they, they work diligently to get that going. And uh, uh, ironically, uh, they knew we were coming up to our event, so they, they worked extra hard to get that going. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we started the athletes practicing down the street. Uh, over at the digital pool. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, it was maybe about the third week of April was when, when it opened. And uh, that very day was the first day our athletes actually jumped in the Agania pool in over a year. Outstanding. Okay, so, so Cam, we got, we got to go, but we'll give you the last word. Um, what time should people show up at the Agania pool okay. to cheer on the athletes? Okay, this year it's a little bit different. We're starting a little bit earlier. It's a hotter day nowadays oh, yeah. during the summer. So um, showtime is going to be eight, uh, 7.30. We're going to do open ceremonies at 8 o'clock, and the races will begin at 8.30. This year, we had a huge um, help from GTA. They're sponsoring the meals and hydration, so they'll provide solids and liquids during the lunch period. Um, we're also getting a donation from First Hawaiian Bank, so they'll be providing a check presentation to us. And, um, yeah. And parents are providing some of the food as well. Exactly. Well they're done. Doing a, they're, they're Louisa doing a pile Westling. Up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Louisa Westling mm -hmm. is heading that. And... Of course, you know Carol. She was your neighbor. Yep, Carol, and, of course. Yeah, and Carol is, is in the thick of things. Okay. So it's, it's going to be a great event. Okay. Well, we got to go, guys, but thanks so much. Well, yep. thank you thank for you. having us. All right. We're back after this. Guam is truly a majestic place with its